Good morning, everybody. Um, it's a wonderful day. Uh, today is the 20th day in the month of July 2022. My name is Heritage Adisa, Markets Analyst at HFM 9 Nigeria. And as always, we'll check through the markets and then find out what the overall sentiment is, you know, what the big story is, um, if it provides opportunities, and then how we can take advantage of it. But please, like always, do remember that this is just a communication material. And nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as investment advice or an investment recommendation. Users acknowledge that investments in FX and the CFD products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which users are solely responsible and liable. Now, all through this week, We've talked about the Federal Reserve meeting being the major, major, major focus, right? The major, major theme. And then we had markets move slowly on Monday, Tuesday. We were waiting for FOMC. Wednesday, played out the same way. And then the FOMC didn't disappoint, right? It provided a lot of volatility in the markets. And then we are back today where things are getting slower once again. And let's quick delve quick into it. And I said, a tentative flows in markets post FOMC. Going into today's trading session, markets are trading mostly mixed after the bout of volatility that we had from the Federal Reserve meeting yesterday. So yesterday evening around 7 p.m. basically, um, Nigerian time, the Federal Reserve released um, their statements, their rate decision, and then we had a lot of volatility. Um, so far today, equities are trading mostly mixed. You know, you look at them in mostly small ranges, right? Although most of them keep the gains that they had from FOMC. Um, US 500, for example, is basically near on change levels. You look at bond yields today as well. Bond yields are trading mixed, you know, some are up, some are down. But then US 10 has recovered some of the losses from yesterday session as well, but up about 2.67% so far today. You look at the commodity space. Now, they are broadly higher in today's session. Well, weakness in the USD has helped, you know, commodities higher. And then even you know, low supply of oil as well from the Nord Stream 1 pipeline as well also help oil prices higher. So there's also that. US oil is up, but just by quite a margin, just small, a small margin, rather, um, 0.53% mark, you know, in today's session already. So there's that to pay attention to. And then you look at measures of volatility, right? That shows where markets are in terms of fear. And then they are also make some bounces up, some other bounces down. Now, what did the Federal Reserve meeting, the FOMC meeting provide yesterday? And what happened and how did the market react? Now, yesterday, the Fed hiked interest rates by about 75 basis points, as expected, right? But then, you know, the, the statement wasn't really much changed, right? But what did markets hold on to? Now, the Fed basically acknowledged that, you know, spending and production indicators have slowed compared to what we had, you know, um, earlier in the previous meeting where they said it started to show improvement. Now, clearly shows that, you know, they're seeing that slowdown. Recent data points have not been the best. And then they said that as they've approached the neutral level, because right now they are neutral rates, as they've approached neutral rates as well. Now, going forward, they could be less less aggressive, right, in terms of policy rate hike, which is also another thing to hold on to. And then they said, going forward, they're not giving us any clear cuts, you know, forward guidance, right, in terms of what they want to do. It will be data dependent. So as data points keep coming out, right, that would, you know, show what they would do, whether they would, you know, hike by 75 basis points or even 50. They didn't mention, you know, the rates, but then basically says, right, whatever happens with data going forward, that would determine what they do with interest rates. And now, understanding that markets and data have, you know, been weaker as well, all of these factors, you know, was picked as less hawkish, um, not really dovish, but at least less hawkish. And then equities took that as a strong relief. And then we saw a strong relief rally and then the US dollar plunge. Now, markets going forward would now start to pay attention to subsequent economic data. First of all, we have, you know, US advanced GDP later today. That would be, you know, the first step. Now, this clearly would, the previous one that we had was a deep negative, about 1.6% there, about negative for quarter one. Now for quarter two, right, if this also comes in negative, that would be two consecutive quarters of negative growth, which efficiently puts the U.S. into a technical recession, right? And that clearly says the U.S., you know, Federal Reserve may even slow down in the rate hikes even more. And that also puts in some further downside for the dollar. Although markets are expecting, you know, the data this month to be a little bit of growth, small growth as well, uh, I think 0.4% growth, right? So if that happens, well, that would even help ease or even better numbers would help he ease the downside we have in the dollar. And then help see, you know, help see some upside in the USD because it could put back some of the rate hike bets back into the market. But if there is a big miss or 
a big miss in negative territory that would clearly punish the US dollar further and then they will see what is rally even more. Now, coming over to the FX space, now, there's not been so much of movement elsewhere, aside from the Japanese yen. Japanese yen has, you know, basically benefited the most from the Federal Reserve meeting, jumping highest, and then even today's session leading the majors strongly. Now, why is that the case? Now, before now, when we've had, or when we had the Federal Reserve, you know, being all hawkish, the Japanese yen and the Bank of Japan have basically suffered the most because of the massive policy divergence. Now, with the Fed tilting a little bit less hawkish, that reduces some of that gap, you know, that we have in terms of the, po um, the policy divergence, and then that has seen some ease back into the Japanese. Japanese yen, and there's been calls or there's been talk that some of the, you know, massive short positions on Japanese yen have been unwound, you know, in yesterday's session after the post um, FOMC meeting, and that has seen, you know, some rally back into the Japanese yen. So there was that. Um, if you look at JPY crosses across board, has seen, you know, that's like basically the most notable mover really in the FX space. But you look at on the weaker side, the euro, the CHF are basically tussling the bottom spot. Dollar still keeps on to, you know, it's post FOMC weakness, so there's that to look out for. But elsewhere, most of the moves are marginal in FX and not really showing so much promise, right? I think until we get the US advanced GDP, that could provide us, you know, some volatility, some strong, strong, strong flow in the markets. But so far today, so far right now, it hasn't really been much, much, much to hold on. So US GPY is down about 0.65%. Um, Euro GPY is down about 0.73%. Even City GPY is down about half a point, have a percentage point for us, um, 0.50% so far. So basically, JPY crosses, you know, making the most of the moves so far today with JPY's trends, right? But then with equities still moving flat and with the post FOMC meeting being a positive or could it could be a positive for, you know, um, equities, could be a positive for um, other hybrid occurrences. You want to also be very watchful about what you pay against the JPY. Now, I said, you know, US advanced GDP basically is the highlight for the day ahead. Now, you look at the, you know, um, the equity space, for example, just quickly looking at equities, just run through them. Now, this is what we're talking about, basically not going anywhere today. Now, don't forget that over the last couple of sessions, we've started really flat. And it doesn't mean that the day would end up being flat. That's why you should pay attention to, you know, whatever the flow is in terms of the news feed, whatever is going on in the markets will be important, right? But clearly we had, you know, that massive upside from, you know, um, the Fed meeting, basically. Right now in today's session, we've, we're pulling back. Now, any rotation back towards this key round number around 4,000, which was the high going back to 21st of July, as well as the high going back to 2nd of July. Better still, if you even have a miss in US GDP, we could see and expect this to also push higher from this level as well. So clearly one to watch out for this key 4,000, you know, level on the US holidays. And an interesting one to pay attention to as well as we head into the session. You look at US 30, basically felt as well into the session, right? Same story there, flat moves as well in FX, right? So as another one to pay attention to as well, right? Um, US 100, right? Basically still moving flat. Now, in this case, we're pushing a little bit lower down about 0.50%, but basically still well within, you know, just an ounce of yesterday's range. Now, you could look across the other equity space. The dollar index itself, after the massive downside, has just held on to the losses, but hasn't really, really, you know, um, seen continued momentum to the downside and is struggling at these key low levels. But right, has been seen most of the week, really, coming from the one Friday, you know, last week. So clearly, there is that to pay attention to. And then you look at oil prices. Yes, a little bit higher today, but the margins are not as big, right? But clearly, continues to the upside. Now, we also had more comments from, you know, um, the Russian government as well, in terms of Nord Stream pipeline, it says they are producing and supplying as much as they can, but it wouldn't really be their fault if they cannot really service equipment because of the restrictions, right? So that at 20% capacity, lower supply in the markets, supportive oil prices, weaker US dollar, supportive oil prices, all of this, you know, still, still help, you know, um, oil prices will keep as a tailwind for oil prices as well, you know, going into today's session as well. Now, crossing over to JPY crossing, this is what I'm talking about. US JPY downside massively um, from the FOMC meeting has continued lower as well into this session. And then you look at where we are trading right now. We're currently, just a moment, now, we're currently here struggling with this key, key round number. That's where it becomes tricky, right? This key round number around 135.5, how was the low going back to, I think, 21st? They're about 22nd of July, you know, was seen as low going back to the 8th of July as well. You know, a couple of 
resistance levels, support levels key here. And then, yes, despite the fact that we're seeing weakness in the US, it becomes a bit tricky to try and, you know, catch up with this. Probably the fact that we've even broken through and smashed the ATR already, you know, in today's session. So what we'd like to see, well, a weaker US GDP, very weak miss in negative territory, would also see this move lower some more. So clearly, a rotation back towards this round number, the previous low going back to early Asia, you know, could be interesting. This is a um, one, three, five, one, three, six, rather. That could be interesting in terms of looking for the downside if we have a miss in the data point. So there's that to pay attention to. Euro is also weaker. We still have, you know, the stress as well in the Euro economy also still weighing on markets. Downside into this session. It's moved a lot already today. Um, right now, we are you know, um, struggling around this key, around this um, lower level that we had earlier this week. So that's, I think, Tuesday. So there's that to pay attention to. But right now, we've retested this round number, which is also the low going back to the 14th of July. So also an interesting one. We could see for the downside on this particular pair in line with JPY strides, but not something I'm looking to latch onto right now so far, right? Um, all of this still being in play. The point is, generally, the market environment is still very much tentative. Um, so you want to still put it back in your mind. But whatever we get from the US GDP data could, could, could be a very interesting one for the dollar and even for the rest of the week. So we want to see a big, big, big beat in the numbers for the dollar to see some, you know, reprieve, some pullback from the losses we had from the post-FOMC meeting. And that could also help equities lower a bit. But if we have a big miss, that would also see the dollar continue lower and equities push higher. JPY also strengthening some more in today's session. Now, crossing over to the calendar, like I said, US GDP is basically, you know, the key, key, key one. We're expecting about 0.4%, you know, growth as well for this for the last quarter, that's Q2. That would be interesting. But if we have a miss of this, a big miss, what's off if you have another negative one that shows that we're in technical recession for the US and that clearly is a negative for the US dollar as well. So that's it for now. We're going to keep it at that. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I would always do our best to help you. Thank you and do enjoy the rest of your trading session. Goodbye for now.